Hey, horse. I shall not be facing the camera, I should be facing Shawman. Uh, and the, probably the angle's better anyway, but uh, if you need me to kind of turn and show, we'll just get used to this angle and then we'll see how we get on. Understand? I'm also looking at you over there, so that's okay. Okay, we're going to do uh, Jean, Jean today. Okay, so let's start. Everybody from here, you are So, like, just like Gion and Jitte, same position, left hand, open right hand to your uh, clenched and like, then like this kind of Chinese symbol of peace, uh, and then just hands over, okay? Okay, so step back, left leg, compression and double blockage. And then from here, open to close your hands, punch to my knee. And then change to the waistband. Okay, that's just that part first, yeah? So like, like hand sign down, uh, like double block, opposite of, uh, of G, uh, Jean, where your, your right leg forward is Uchuke. This one, right leg forward is Gidambrai. So whenever we do this through the kata, Whatever leg is forward, you're making get on right, get on right dominant, this hand opposite. Yeah. Okay, you're ready. So, one more time. Okay, itch, knee, sound. Okay, okay. Then get this, get this kind of rounding of the shoulders, yeah? Rounding of the shoulders, the inner thigh muscle squeeze. Kind of get that compression to your, to your center and then you're just opening. Opening your chest to produce the technique. Or produce the technique, opening your legs to produce the kind of stance. So from this compression, everything open to the start. Okay, yeah. Okay, then next one. Again, kind of like compressing your, your right side as you kind of wrap around to produce the preparation for magic light to open. Knee. The exact same, wrap around this side, kind of bringing this way in, and then pulling back sound. Okay, then don't, don't kind of don't release the stance both in all three moves until you've prepared, yeah? So you get you get this type of preparation and then you're gonna release the stance, release the upper body to produce this block, yeah? You get this type of preparation before you release Manjigamai. Exactly the same type of preparation, then release Manjigamai. Understand? Okay guys, come with me, let's give it a go. Let me see what you're doing. And you're a little bit like this, yeah? You're a little bit too high. Can I bring this down? Can I think this horizontal? So from your, for, your upper arm through to your shoulders is horizontal, not kind of 45 degrees. Okay, last 30 seconds, guys. If you've got any questions, just ask. Okay, okay, yeah, mate. Then, guys, especially from that, you know, you're, you're here, you've just made that, that double block, yeah? Wrap yourself around that compression point. Kind of in this point, it's kind of like your right side, your right joint, so your right hip, right shoulder. Kind of wrap yourself around that point. Inner thigh muscle squeeze, pec squeeze. Get that hand open, both hands open, open to clench as you block. And then from here, you're just going to open, open your joint, rotate your hip, rotate your upper body to produce manjigamai. Then again, you're going to wrap yourself around like opening this part, and then again, open. Open from this point and everything same time. Understand? Okay, okay, one more time, guys. So from here, you okay? Okay, okay, itch, knee, sound. Okay, I, UK, she, and punch goal. Then round, I, UK, rook, and punch, itch. Okay, one more time. Let's go from, uh, yeah, we'll go from managing high. So from here, yeah? 
Okay, so round feeling. Get that inner thigh muscle squeezed. Kind of, you can, as you do, your foot can rotate on your heel. Like it's not so important, don't kind of try to orchestrate this foot movement. But as a result of this compression, your foot should rotate in. As soon as it hits, then you're going to send it forward, I give you Okay, in. Back leg, drive, knee. Then again, heel rotate. Heel pivot, then blocks out. Ah, she. Okay. Understand? So that, that turn, yeah? Like, you want to kind of synchronize all those elements together. So you've made magic goodbye. You want to rotate your hip. As you do, inner thigh muscle squeeze. As a result, foot turn. As at the same time, left hand to hickey tape, right hand preparation. So all those things are going on at the same time. You're getting that compression coming through your center, getting that compression, then driving forward. And Boizuki. This one's a little bit more complex, but in many ways easier because you're just rotating in and then, then counter rotates the tag UK. Understand? Okay, a couple minutes guys, try. If you've got any questions, just to ask. Go on, speak. No, sorry, no more class just ran late, so I just jumped in now. So I'm fine. Okay, we're, we're doing we're doing Jean, yeah? Doing Jean. Oh Jean. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that supporting leg which is your left leg yeah you're rotating and then being able to drive so that's got to have at least some level of bend in order to drive that body forward for the IVP, yeah don't come up and then fall okay then guys last 30 seconds any questions just ask power in that back leg because it's bent, it's able to push, you've got rotation in your hip. But a lot of people kind of use that back leg drive to rotate and, you, and you're rotating and then stepping and it produces kind of like a, well first of all you waste all that back leg drive on the hip rotation that you don't need. You want that back leg drive to shift your body mass. So from here that back leg drive should be shifting your body mass and you've got to facilitate that with like that kind of soft joint, that flexible ankle, flexible knee kind of feeling. So you, 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 shouldn't, you shouldn't kind of use that back leg drive to produce that. And when you do do that, it tends to produce a stiffness in your hip and then you kind of come over that front leg when you want to kind of go through it, yeah? So, so from here, back leg drive is for your body mass, not your hip rotation. Back leg drive and then you rotate your hip into showman from, from ham knee to showman rather than from ham knee to showman how many showmen again? It's too much wasting your time. You understand? Okay. Okay, one more time, guys, from the beginning. Okay, here we go. Okay, inch, knee, time, she, knee, go. Rock, inch. Okay, get on right, inch. Stock, go. Jump, inch. Okay, yummy. Okay, so let's go from uh, that Oizuki. So, left leg, left hand Oizuki. So again, you get that compression 
all this initial part of the capsule, you're compressing a lot, yeah? So this compression then releases the number H. Now open, like just we say with the boys do keep. Back leg is going to drive, but you're not going to rotate. And you can actively use the preparation for shoot up to keep that chest open. This open, then rotate in. You've got a lot of drive in that back leg, you keep out, yeah? Keep it open with your preparation. Knee! And one more time, time! Hey, right. you You understand? Yes. So, now it's like a little bit of a different feeling. Like, up until that point, up until the get on bride, you're making compression and expanding. Compressing, expanding. Compressing, expanding. Even the first move, compressing and expanding into position. This one, expand to close. Expand to close. You still can't drive from the back leg, but from this get on bride, Use the preparation for shoot up. This opening of your chest as you push with that back leg. Don't change your body shape, yeah? Keep and then rotate all at once for that, for that shoot up. Keep. Keep then rotate. Keep then rotate. Understand? Take that. Yes. Give it a go. Is this, is this a move where you're trying to keep your hip and elbow connected like you would do with the um, Tay shows in? Jite. Yeah, so, so think like Jite, Jean and Gion are all kind of sister katas. So think that they kind of have the same themes running through them. So like whereas Jite, where you kind of come round this way, yeah? Then uh, Gion, uh, sorry, Jean is exactly the same. I mean, there's, there's less of a, like, well, I mean, of course, there's no physical connection. So everything's just metaphor. But it's a little bit more easy to envisage kind of facial connection because that hip and elbow are very close together. Whereas this, it, obviously there's a bigger distance, but the same sort of connected body. So your hip goes, your upper body goes, your elbow goes, everything, same time. Same time rather than projecting. What's that? Okay, okay, one minute guys, give it a go. issues that I see with uh, what people are doing. Uh, the first one is, is that you're landing and then pushing afterwards. And so there's this, I mean, that's, that's very similar to kind of stepping and then finishing your punch afterwards. We'd never do, right? We want to, like, a lot of people synchronize your, your stepping foot with your stepping hand and boom, everything finishes together. I mean, at least it's not right, but at least the timing's okay. But really what you're doing is you're synchronizing that back leg and that driving hand together so everything finishes at the same time. Well, then this is the same. You're gonna synchronize the rotation of your body, the driving of that leg into stance with your hand finishing, right? So, so make sure that you're trying to get that synchronization correct. That's one point. Second point that I'm seeing a lot of people do is kind of you're preparing too small. If you prepare short, you'll finish long and you'll end up kind of going straight. Finish bit, uh, start big, like, like Sotsuke preparation. Now that's not to say that you, know, you want like this big action. You want to keep your hand close to your side of your, your head, just so you don't wrench your shoulder. But you want to open your chest. This is like training for your upper body. Open your chest, then come round to that technique and let your body action produce the technique. And certainly don't, don't go beyond kind of like that kind of like quite bent shape, yeah? You don't want to straighten your arm. This is the strongest, where your lat is locked in, elbows pointing down, and you're going with your body mass from this point. You understand? Okay, last 30 seconds, guys. If you've got any questions, just ask. Oh. 
Sure, we'll face we'll face this way, yeah? Huh? Just to confuse you. So, so we just finished that guy. So left leg moving, 45 degrees behind. Okay, yeah. Same such, yeah? Okay, knee sanchi go double block finish. Rock. Shit, cool job. Okay. One more time. Just those ten moves, yeah? So we're doing Kakiwaki UK, the Maigiri Nihonski, the double block. The exact same the other way. One, two, three, four. Okay? Okay, one more time, guys. Uh, we'll, we'll face it another way. So we just finished this KI point. So 45 degrees behind us, uh, left leg moving. Kakiwaki UK. Just watch, guys, and then, uh, then if you've got any questions, you can ask. Um, I'll show you from face this way. So, so from this point, again, in the thymus source, pec squeeze. So you get in that kind of preparation. Then I'm holding this point, mainly to show you where you're going to and from. But of course, you don't hold it. So from this contraction point, then you're releasing forward, kakiwaki uke. Okay, you can go show me that same touch. Then shoot on, shoot on, shoot on. So, my giri, poizuki, yakuzuki. Hip square each time, relax. Then this double block. And you kind of get this kind of reverberation, this kind of bouncing feeling, yeah? Don't make it about your upper body, make it about kind of your sense of kind of engaging, relaxing, engaging, relaxing. Exactly the same. In a time muscle, pec squeeze, then open. Then again, this one, two, three, four, finish. And again, it's that back leg firing each time to produce. The Hoizuki Gakazuki double block. Understand? Yes, yes. Okay, give it a go, guys. Any questions, just ask. Okay. Yep. In Gion, he said it was very much one, two, three, four. Hmm. And in this one, it's one, two, three, four. Yeah, so the so timing is like this one, two, three, four. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. Well, at least the way I, that's how I, I do it, you know. Not necessarily the absolute way. Then down and make sure you're all the way around, yeah? So it's the other way is the same way forward. You can do the other way around. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
let's just go through that again because there's quite a few people who are um, a little bit kind of uh, mixing it up. So, look, I've got my left leg forward and I've just done Kakiwaki Uke. So obviously I'm gonna I'm gonna put, kick with my right leg, punch with my right hand. So this this Maigiri Poizuki, relax Gakazuki, then from here, right leg is forward, so right hand Giramburai. Okay, if I change, so Kakiwaki Uke the other way. So left leg is gonna kick Maigiri, yeah? Maigiri left, Oizuki left, release, Gakazuki left, release. Managing a uh, door block, yeah? So, so making sure that whatever leg is forward, the Gidambarai hand is, is, is the same hand and leg. Understand? So don't, don't do this. This is kind of like the go-to thing for Gion, yeah? Um, it doesn't exist much else in any other kata, but it's just like people learn Gion first, and so they get that ingrained that when you, when you whatever leg is forward, you do Uchuke. But in this case, it's the opposite. Understand? Okay, one more minute, guys. You got any questions? Just ask. Yeah, we'll just get that kind of ingrained a little bit more. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so like normally, normally when you do this, like Gion, for example, not so Gion, sorry, Hian Sanam, Hian Sanam, you know, you you're kind of coming up, and it's and it's really kind of this, but here because you're in Zenka Scratch, um, it. it you can get away, like you just made Gakazuki, you can get away with just using your upper body to produce. And there's a certain level of, of merit to that, yeah? There's nothing wrong with, with kind of, you know, my eight one, two, and then just this compression. But you want that expansion of your chest uh, kind of to play a part. And because you're vibrating your hips for the two punches, this one, relax, two, relax, three, then you want to, you can, you can also use that to kind of, be part of the movement. So, so for me, most of the time, I'll kind of vibrate my hip. Sometimes though, you know, I'll just go back to kind of using my shoulders to create power. Uh, it's entirely up to you. But I'd be able to, should be able to do both. Awesome, thank you. Okay. Anything else, guys, before we move on? Since, uh, yes. At, at, at the very final position, you're, you've Keaton Barry, uh, you're in Shodan or in a uh, edge. You're not in Amni at that position. Showman, yeah, yeah. You're in Showman, but yeah. it's block, yeah. Yeah, so, so you've, you've kicked and you've punched Oizuki, you're in Showman. You're relaxed, you're in Showman. Relax, shoulders squeeze, Showman again. And it's just about kind of that kind of firing of the hip and maintaining Showman dash right the way through. Awesome. Okay? What's that, sorry? Yes. Question, when you say firing with your hip, does that mean that you have to bend your back leg just a little bit so you can fire? Yeah, for sure. So, so what I mean by firing of the hip is, is that like, you know, like basically your, your, your back leg is spent when you're in showman. And not completely, there's still a little bit of a push, but you want to ever so slightly relax that back leg, allow your hip to kind of, some don't feel like pulling it back, but a little bit kind of relaxation, then fire again. So it's very small movement, but it's that body mass that is putting behind the leg drive, or in front of the leg drive, should I say. So after this Gakazuki, you're relaxing and then driving forward. Don't feel like you're rotating with this. If you rotate, again, you take away, you add to one hand and you take away from the other. So don't feel like you're relaxing your legs so you can rotate. Relax your legs so you can fire, fire your body mass forward. So from that Gakazuki, Gakazuki forward, this double block forward. What's that? It does, yes. Okay, last 30 seconds, guys. Tara Lee, but then, yeah, not three punches, only two punches, yeah, that's it. And then hands the other way around. Wherever leg is forward, hand down. Wherever opposite hand, hand up. seconds. Okay, um, let me just kind of clarify like a little bit what Bjorn was saying and also a little bit what uh, Paul was saying. Um, you know, like you're, when you're firing your back leg, then you can fire your back leg to produce rotation. You can also fire your back leg just to kind of push your body mass forward. Like if you, from, from this point, right, from this point, if I relax my back leg a lot, 
then of course my hip is going to rotate a lot and then consequentially as I drive this leg my, my, I'm going to have a definite rotation but like we're a long way from away from kind of rotation I'm not relaxing my back leg a lot it's just a little bit a little bit then I'm keeping my tailbone engaged but what it does is it allows my body to move back a little bit and it's that little micro movement that I'm going to add to that movement so I'm just driving from that Gakazuki, as I relax, I'm allowing myself to shift back and then forward again. It doesn't affect your stance because your, you know, your hip has, has a lot of, well, most hips have a lot of flexibility. Yeah? It's a ball and socket joint, so you, so you can shift quite a lot in your stance within just the ball and socket joints. So just try to shift back and forward, back and forward. There'll be an element of rotation there, but not kind of like classic hip rotation, how many showmen. Understand? Yep. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, guys, let's start from the beginning. Okay, you ready? Okay. Okay, slowly relax. Okay, each. Knee, san. Shi, go. Ro, shi, ha. Ko, jo, each. Knee, san, shi, go. Okay, we're going to spin. Heel rotation, yeah? You're going to pivot on your left heel. Right leg's going to go round, hand underneath, and round. Tetsu, itch. Knee, same again, rotate. Next one, direct. Come across your body, direct. Tetsu, this hand. Okay, let's just try that again, yeah? So let's go. You've got your left leg forward. You just done double block, yeah? We're going to spin. So, right leg move, rotate on your heel. Hand to left, right hand to your left hip. Round and rotate it to itch. Then knee. And then direct his hand. Okay? One more. One more from here. Okay. Itch. Knee. Turn. There you go. Understand? Say again, sorry? The third rotation is on the ball of the foot by the looks of it. Correct. Heel, heel, ball. Okay. So guys, two ways to do this. Uh, so if you want, try both. Try one. Uh, get good at one. But ultimately, you can, you can rotate, counter-rotate. So, a little bit like here on Sandan. Can you hear that? Yeah. Here's yeah, stand up where you, after this nookie tail, you're going to spin around Tetsu. You can turn and counter rotate to Tetsu. So you're, you're rotating round one way, and then you're rotating the opposite way to produce this Tetsu. Then this is kind of like really super nerd karate. Like taking an idea to the nth degree uh, and trying to make it as difficult as possible. Uh, so. You can try that way. Or, a little bit more basic, a little bit more arguably mainstream for Hian Sanam, uh, is where you're just spinning round. So you're spinning round into this Tetsu. And you should be able to do both. And I think both have, its, have the challenges, right? I'd say the second one is probably a little bit easier, where you're just kind of spinning round. Uh, but both have their challenges done at speed and power, yeah? So, so this, this is exactly the same when we're doing uh, these turns, right? You can, uh, from here, you can rotate, then counter rotate on the first and second, yeah? Rotate, then counter rotate for the tetsu. Third one, you just kind of direct. Uh, or you can just rotate in. This rotate in fitting, rotate in fitting. This one, you're going to square to open anyway, it's a little bit different fitting. Uh, but both, both uh, options are possible. Understand? Okay, I want you to give that a go, guys. If you've got any questions, just ask. With the Tetsui Sensei, is there a bit of leading with the elbow? So it's not the whole hand coming up, it's the elbow first. Yeah, you want to have this sense of elbow to open. Very much like your racket, yeah? Obviously, your racket's far more powerful. <laughs> Isn't that right, or Sensei? No. <laughs> what does he know? Yeah, so, so elbow then to open Tetsui. Yeah, this is, this is a kind of a, 
a much more of a strike, as in a, a snapping strike, bomb you'd hit, right? You wouldn't lock it out. Uh, so elbow first, then weapon. Anything else, guys? No? Could be okay. Okay, just try. So whatever striking hand, always below, guide hand above. Yep. Okay guys, let's go from the beginning all the way to the end, yeah? Okay, nice relax, like hands. Punch, punch, then my punch, then double block, 
Then we're gonna go back on ourselves, rotate, double block. Then get up right, double your chuke. Then punch, pound. Hey. Hey. Okay, understand? Sorry, Stan, I've got more questions. Yeah, go. okay. Uh, is it, you said Zenko to Dutch, not Pudo Dutch, or that's um, uh, blocking out after the last. Tennis yeah. Right. Yeah. It's uh, it's Zen Touch. Okay. And yeah. the last punch is a chew down, chew down. Chew down. Chew down, chew down. Okay, I'll stop watching some of these other videos. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, some people do do Joe Dan, Chew for those punches, uh, but generally speaking, it's Chew Dan, Chew down. Not many Joe Dan punches in Shotokan Karate, apart from Agisuki. Okay, a couple of minutes, guys. If you got any questions, just ask. Say again, sorry? Uh, well, yeah. Slowly. Yeah. So that last sequence, yeah? So you're, you're coming uh, you're coming round and double block, right? Then from here, this fast get on right. Then right hand in front, slowly double uchuke before left, right. Okay? Like you were, you, you, were you there yesterday with Rick Sensei? Bjorn? You, were you there yesterday with uh, Winter Cake or with Rick? No, just yes, ah. with you. Okay, okay, because he was teaching this Sanchin, oh no, what was he teaching? Sanchin. Sanchin, Sanchin Katsu. It's like Sanchin Katsu where you're, you're relaxed and then locking in your lat, yeah? Like that Okinawan Goju do. Like, oh, this same, same thing here. Not really, but for me, with my nerdy sensibility, because you're, because you're punching left first, it's like your right is dominant, and then you're punching with your left, right? So, so for me, right hand is first, and then you're punching with your left. Just like Sanchin, you would go, you like, left hand, left leg, left hand first, and then it'd be your right hand that punches. So, uh, you know, right hand first, left hand punch in Zanshin Kata. So, so for me, right hand first, then left, right, before you come back up. But, no, doesn't make any difference. Okay. Sorry? What's the toughest door to get, get up right? Hey. Sorry, Ross is making weird Bruce Lee noises. Say that again. What's the toughest door to get up right before you do this? Double suki. No. Uh, so the only minute, the time you, after you've done, you finish the third, like this spinning tetsu, and you're coming 45 degrees, touch this door. That's all, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Okay, 
so guys, uh, like I just just watching a, um, a couple of couple of things, um, like people are kind of working through bits part of the cutter. Let's just go back to that get on bry a little bit before we do the turn. So you know you've made this tate stall and you've gone one two and you and you've made this uh, double punch. Yeah, don't of course you don't want to lean and then kind of uh, kind of uh, kind of flip back into the gakazuki. Like a lot of people do this and it actually feels really nice. Like leaning back really facilitates your maigiri. Not in a good way, it just allows you to kick higher and, and maybe a little bit freer. But there's no weight behind it, right? And then when you flick back, you get that locked in feeling for the gakazuki. So it kind of feels nice in both ways, but not for, not for good reasons, yeah? So you want to get that compression. Uh, well, you, don't, don't, don't. you want to get that compression of your abdomen, so it's your compression that's producing the maigiri. So you're compressing this compression, compression, and you want to try to make sure that that body mass doesn't move. You're just you're just compressing, compressing, compressing for this maigiri of gakazuki without this body mass shifting in this way. Do you understand? Yeah, so I'm seeing quite a few people do that kind of that shifting feeling. So maybe just try that for a couple of minutes. And if you've got any questions, then please ask and then we'll, we'll finish off the whole cutter. Okay guys, <laughs> okay, okay we're gonna go through it all yeah, all one count, obviously I'll, I'll take it easy with the count because I know people are shuffling here and there and everywhere to, to, uh, to get the, uh, the, the space that they're in, we'll go through it slowly um, and then if you've got any questions you can ask and then we'll do it speed and power, again slow intervals between the counts but still speed and power, you understand? Okay, okay, okay nice and relaxed. He's the last punch. Okay? Okay. Questions, guys? Ask now. Say it again, Brian. Someone talked to me, I think, about Furudachi. Do you know where they came from? Furudachi for the Tatishto? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I think the thing is, is that. Like, Frudach and Zenkopstach are kind of interchangeable. So, like, I'm not saying that Frudach is wrong, because it's not. It's just that I do it in Zenkopstach. And really, like, for example, for example, Kasei Sensei, like, he never had front stance. You know, he had never had Zenkopstach. He only had Frudach because of his, his build and his, uh, dare I say, girth. 
Uh, you know, like he was, you know, like a big guy, big, big, dumpy, fat guy. Uh, so Furudach was his natural kind of position, right? Uh, like when people make Hamni. So, so um, for Hamni Zenkustach, Furudach is interchangeable. And so, for example, a Sai Sensei would often, would often teach kind of Basai Dai in this kind of Furudach, Furudach shape, yeah? And you'd see him do this, and it most definitely was Furudach. And actually, to be fair, I do that sometimes as well. It just feels better. It feels it's a better way to try uh, to uh, to kind of um, push your weight forward to project your body mass. So um, I wouldn't really think much about changing Zenkusach Hamni and Furudach. They're both basically the same thing. Well, they're not, of course, but you know what I mean. Okay. Anything else? No, nope, all good. Okay, let's try speed and power. I shall watch. Uh, watch speed and power. So I uh, like people the yeah. Each me tap chi go rock see hatch come jump e cha me. say like the like just general themes that I would say um, that people are doing like first of all it's those turns yeah so like a, a good example is after the the first Oyuzuki and you're turning to make this like UK there's an awful lot of kind of sticking your bum out as you as like that pressure between your supporting leg pivoting leg and your your center as you're preparing round for IQK, a lot of people are kind of allowing the the body to buckle and, and sticking their bum out uh, and there's, there's loads of examples where you do that in in gene yeah so be careful about that second thing that i'd say people are doing is like especially this uh, kind of stop where you're pushing at the end so your whole body is stopped but your hand is still traveling yeah so try to synchronize total body action your, your center is moving, your leg is moving, your hand is moving, and then everything stops at the same time. Everything stops at the same time rather than, than stopping and then continuing with your hand. Understand? Okay, that's one, one thing, uh, what, like one general thing. The other thing I would say is, um, is that, like, try to understand the, the kind of themes of Gene, yeah? It's not an often practiced kata, like certainly the JK have kind of abandoned Gene and they don't practice it at all. Uh, but it's a really nice kata for this kind of compression expansion movement, also expansion to compression movement. Um, also, I'd say that kind of that, that kind of um, kind of vibration of movement. So one technique leads into the next technique leads into the next technique. Yeah, where you get that kind of continuous kind of flow within your technique. So if you think you know like this, one, two, three, four, feeling where you you're just bouncing from one technique to the next technique to the next technique. That's kind of a really nice uh, feeling within Gene as well. You understand? Yeah. Okay, last chance, guys. Any questions? Mr. Say. Yes. You mentioned the story behind the cat that Jin. You said JK has abandoned. What, what's the story? Why? I don't know, what's the reason why? Uh, so, yeah, JKA. JK, well, they didn't ban it. They just dropped it from the syllabus. So now JK only have 25 cat rolls than 26. Uh, why? I don't know. The, the only thing I could think of is that it's the only kata that, that, doesn't, that wasn't covered in Nakayama Sensei's best karate. So there's no manual for it. Uh, maybe, maybe they thought that it was too similar to uh, you know, the sister katas of Jitte and Jion. Uh, like I don't, I don't buy into that at all, but, but that's maybe their rationale. And at a time when you know, people are trying to expand their knowledge, I mean, they did this a good 10, maybe 20 years ago, 15 years ago maybe. Uh, but in a time when people were trying to expand the knowledge, they were, they were, dare I say, limiting it because there's certain aspects of, of, of movement within uh, Gian 
that uh, don't exist in, in other classes. So, so uh, yeah, I don't know. Okay? Okay. Okay, guys, please go. Okay. Hey, awesome.